or listening in later. Today is Thursday the 14th of May. We are now past the 50-day mark in our journey through the coronavirus lockdown and I have a confession to make. Ours is what you might call a very word heavy house. Well what else would you expect from two English teachers with a love of literature? In addition to all of the books in the house many too many of them i have to say there are also boxes upon boxes of them stacked up in the garage now this is after various culls that have moved some volumes on though obviously not nearly enough even the walls are a bit wordy of course there are the pictures but there are words as well there's the shalom above me for example Shalom is perhaps the key term of hope in the Hebrew Bible. I'll talk about how rich it is in levels of meaning sometime in the future. And the two Taiwanese hangings behind me say important things too. I'll talk about them in worship in the coming weeks. You'll see why and, I hope, be taken back to an exercise we did on the very eve of lockdown. Then we have a lovely script of Micah 6, 8, and it says, What does the Lord require of you? Only this, do justice, show constant love, and walk in humble fellowship with your God. Now that's a spot on, in a nutshell summary, of what the prophets were all about in the Old Testament. It's still good advice as a guide for living today. We also have quotes from more modern prophets like Martin Luther King Jr. and Oscar Romero, as well as prayers and wisdom from down the ages. I like the one from the great student of the human mind, Carl Gustav Jung, who wonderfully said, Bidden or not bidden, God is present. It reminds us that whether we are aware of it or whether we are not, we live and we move and we have our being in the very presence of God. But the one I want to share with you today is from the poet and novelist Rainer Maria Rilke. In a work entitled Letters to a Young Poet, he wrote, Be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves like locked rooms and like books that are written in a very foreign tongue do not now seek the answers which cannot be given to you because you would not be able to live them and the point is to live everything live the questions now perhaps you will gradually without noticing it live along some distant day into the answer now, I have loved that since I first read it many years ago, and it has hung on a wall in every house we have ever lived in. We hear the voice of an older, wiser mentor figure offering advice to a younger person close to the start of their journey. The younger person is eager to know so much, but is not mature enough to really understand it. And it's true. We have to live a little and be on the journey a while before we can unlock insight and decipher truth. Now, as you well know, the language of journey is important to us here in Banside. We understand that folk are at different points and we are always trying to support one another. That's a great attitude to have and an important strength in a community of faith. I suppose over the years I've read that Rilke quote, I've always imagined the younger character as on a very personal journey of exploration and development. But coronavirus has added a new twist to my thinking because now there is no one ahead of us with kindly wisdom to impart about how to understand or unlock the future. 
we are all in the same insecure and uncertain place. No one has a road map and we don't have time to gradually live into a distant answer. Things are too fraught and too urgent and for many too frightening. If any of this rings true for you, listen to these words. Many of you will recognise them immediately. But I hope you are able to hear new depths and dimensions in them. They are speaking to you. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within the city. It will not be overwhelmed. God will help at break of day. So be still and know that I am God. The Lord Almighty is with us. Let us pray. God of grief and God of comfort, you continue to be with us and with our world, and we give thanks. We give thanks that week after week you are with us on this long journey. May all who grieve, all who worry, and all who sit with unanswerable questions find strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow, and a peace only you can provide. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, remember to come to worship on Sunday. We'll round off Christian Aid Week by affirming the hope that God energises us with and thinking through some of the big issues we face as a human family. Until then, God bless.